As you can see, something is missing from the garden. I've sold the XM. Somebody contacted me and uh, yeah, they fell in love with the car. They want to restore it as much as possible and uh, drive it again. So yeah, that's gone. Time for a new project. Well, C6 time. Started trying to fix some stuff on this newly acquired C6. So let's start with a cold start. Well, cold, 30 degrees outside, but you know. Yep, all the lights on the dash are on. But it runs very nice. Something is ticking, I don't quite know what. Should be a little bit smoother. So this C6 is the 2.7 HDI, 2006, first series, exclusive with the optional lounge pack, which means you can adjust the rear seats and move the front seat where you are sitting back here. Yeah, luxury, sunroof, lots of miles. And some problems. 322,000 kilometers. Sounds like a lot, but for these cars, these engines, it should not be a problem. Unless properly maintained, change the oil often. Just look out for the engine and it will get you very far. The belt interval is 240,000 kilometers. I think that's a little bit much, but at least with this, Mileage, you know that the belt service has been done and most of the service has been done to keep this car right. So what is wrong with this C6? Uh, when I bought it, I noticed it throws a lot of error codes on the screen. Uh, most of them because the steering angle sensor is broken. And that affects the automatic gearbox, the suspension, uh, engine performance, all that kind of stuff. And both uh, EGR valves are stuck. So, we will try to see if we can fix this EGR problem, or at least see what the problem is. One of the biggest problems with this car, and that's why I bought it so cheap, is that the rear suspension has uh, some play on all the bushes. That's why this rear wheel has a strange angle, and the tire is completely eaten away on the inside. So yeah, it needs some new suspension bushes. Also it needs some new suspension spheres, I think. Because, yeah, the right is quite harsh. But it could also be because the alignment is now completely out of whack. So all the suspension computers are quite angry. Under the hood I also noticed that the, both the swirl valves for the intake uh, runner length system are both not working. So we'll look into that as well. This vacuum pipe is broken in two places, so that system isn't working anyway. But to figure something out to fix this. Got some fuel return line lying around. And that'll do. And they work again. Still ticking. A little bit less turbo noise. Let's 
sounds like the high pressure fuel pump is on its last legs. I don't know if you can hear. Or maybe the cam belt for the fuel pump, because I've removed the cover and now the noise is quite clearly on. I don't know if there's an idler pulley or something, but I think something is up there. Well, there is an idler pulley and it's completely shot. The belt doesn't look as good as it should as well, so I think the last cam belt change they did not do this one. So yeah, I think a lot of the clicking sound is not from here, maybe a little bit because of the ball bearings, but I think most of it is from the injectors. So we'll have to look into that, but for now this needs to be changed anyway. The box time. For people that don't know, this is a Diag box or Lexia system. This is an uh, AliExpress special from China, but nevertheless it works on this car and well, we will see. Well, I've seen worse. So these are the current error codes. Signal brake light switch, EGR valve front one, EGR rear one, and circuit for the glow plugs. I know that the circuit for the glow plug error is almost on every C6. I don't know why, but it still works anyway. So let's see if we can do something about this EGR problem. Next up, EGR valves. Somewhere down there, that's the electric motor that actuates them. Heat exchanger. And the pipe for the EGR. In the DF box we could see that the EGR is not functioning on both sides. So I think it's impossible to get them off like this. But maybe we can look inside and see what's happening. Well, it's not completely full of shit as I was thinking but you can see it doesn't look brand new in there so let's see if we can put some grease in it or something or move the valve around a little bit so I filled the valve with some cleaning agent at least we know the valve is stuck closed so that's a good thing for performance and all other shit so well Let's uh, wait for a bit, see if we can clean it. That's a lot cleaner. But I think this motor we cannot take off without disassembling the whole nose of the car. So I will have to see if we can activate this valve with the DF box. Okay, EGR valves. Uh, electric EGR valve. Let's test it. Listen for the clicking sound. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear a clear clicking sound. No errors. Oh. That was the main EGR valve. These ones are in front and in the rear. Listen for the clicking sound again. First the rear one, and then the forward one. I can hear absolutely nothing.
Well, the rear one has started clicking. The front one still does nothing, so I think the actuator is broken or something. I will try to get it out, but I think it's almost impossible. But we will see. Well, that was a one beer job. Let's see if we can find anything wrong with this. I managed to open it completely, but it is still stuck, so I will try to wiggle it backwards and forwards. It's very tight inside. It moves again. Finally, after some back and forth with some grease inside, it's moving again. So I took apart the motor, and as you can see, the feedback signals, scrapers, they're gone. And there is a broken piece of plastic inside that should limit the motion of this sensor. I think that's broken and that's why these cams are gone. So, it needs a new EGR motor. I don't know if they are sold separately, but we will see. Well, after running the car for a while, it only throws the code for the EGR valve forward. Well, that's normal because it isn't plugged in anymore. And still the brake light switch. So the rear EGR is working again, just by cleaning the valve stem and actuating it a couple of times. So, eh, one for two. For now the car is happy. It thinks both EGR valves are working for some reason. I think when you start driving it, it will notice that valve number two, the forward one, is broken. So, But eh, we're making a little bit of progress here. Let's see if we can get the parts for this EGR. And make sure that we don't have those error codes anymore. <laughs>